Hey Luke here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and welcome to my front yard. And we're gonna take these autumn olive berries and we're gonna turn them into fruit leather. Welcome to another episode of Outdoor Boys and today me and Nathan, we're out picking autumn olives. We're on the east coast, it's the end of September and the autumn olives are ripe and ready to be picked. Autumn olives are an invasive species of bush it makes this wonderful little red berry. It's very tart, um, kind of like a cranberry, but it's great in jams, and we're gonna try to make fruit leather with it, or fruit roll-ups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to identify them, how to pick them, process them, the whole shebang. And this is something we like to do every year. It's just been a really fun tradition. Isn't that right, Nate? Yeah. So these right here are autumn olive bushes. They usually don't get more than 10, 12 feet tall, and They've got these long, drooping, smooth leaves right here. But the most distinct characteristics is the berries grow along the stems. And if you look close, the berries are red with these yellow spots on them. And as you can see here, they get really thick. There's just tons of them. Very distinctive. And inside the berry, there's a single pit. So the best way to pick them is just get a big basket and put them under the, the branches and just go down and just take your fingers and rub the berries off. When they're ripe, they should just fall off really easy. Just working them between your fingers like that. Don't worry if you get leaves and stems and stuff in there, you'll sort it out later. Well, there you go, about 15 seconds of picking and look at all the berries we already have. Good job, Nate. Look at all these berries, just four or five minutes of picking. Man, we're going to get a lot of berries today. So here you can see on the underside, you can see more of the berries. But you can get underneath the, the boughs. Oh, there's so much. Look at this. It's just, you're not picking berries. You're picking clusters of berries. So this is all the berries from just one bush. So you can see there, that's a pretty good pile of fruit just from one autumn olive bush. Maybe 40 minutes of picking. Last year, this bush was crazy full of berries. We got loads of berries off it, and this bush over here didn't have very many. Now this year, that bush is loaded, and this one has hardly any, and they're really late ripening this year. So if you want to find autumn olive bushes, look in places that have full sunlight, usually the edge of meadows, um, on riverbeds, but most importantly on bike trails and roads along the edges where there's full sunlight. So that's where we're, we're going right here. And we've got this big highway here with the bike path along it. And uh, we're gonna go look for autumn olives along the bike path. Over here, there's just tons of blackberry bushes. You tend to find autumn olives in the same places you find blackberries. Uh, but the blackberries are more the middle of the summer. Autumn olives are end of September, beginning of October. You can spot the autumn olive bushes from quite a ways away. They've got this bluish green hue to the leaves. See right there? This autumn olive has kind of wrinkly leaves, but not many berries, not many berries. There we go, here's another good one. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, look how thick they are up in here. Look at this. There's crazy amounts of berries. Got about half a five gallon bucket there. Let's go get another bush. Another bush. Oh yeah, this one's, this one's got some berries on it. Not a lot of berries on this bush, but they're really dark red and plump. You'll see that there's a lot of variation in the coloration of the berries. Daddy. Nathan's decided he's going to pick some flowers for mommy, which I think is really nice. There you go. Here's another one. Look how pale the berries are on this one. You can see a real difference in the coloration of the berries. Here's another autumn olive tree. See right there? A lot of variation in the leaves and the berries, but uh, you can see there's just lots of them all down here. Daddy, 
Here we go. Oh. I think that's it, Nate. I don't think we can get any more in there. Oh, this is really heavy. Well, there we go. We have a heaping five gallon bucket full of autumn olives. Took us three hours. So about a gallon and a half per hour. All right, let's go home. So you can see here we have a big bucket of autumn olives, but there's a lot of sticks and twigs and leaves and there's a few nasty berries and bugs in here. So what we're going to do to sort that all out is we're going to take that and put it in here with a bunch of fresh clean water. And all the bad stuff is going to float to the top and the good berries will slowly sink to the bottom. We're just going to scoop that stuff out. A lot of the rotten berries will float to the surface too. So see right there, just like a little weir. Agitate the berries a little bit to try to free up some of the stems and leaves to float to the surface. So I've been letting the water run for a little while. Let's see how it's done. Well, it's a lot clearer. There's still a little bit here and there floating in the water, but we'll get that out with the next step. It's really clean. There's just a few bits here and there. It's a couple old shriveled ones we're gonna get out. A couple really green ones we're gonna pull out. Thirty-four pounds of autumn olives. What we want to do is we want to separate the flesh and the juice from the pit. And to do that, we're going to use a food mill, which is this little propeller thing of a jiggy that squishes food over a sieve. And you can buy different size sieves for a food mill. Right here, this is a one-eighth inch sieve, and it's the perfect size because it's just barely a small enough to keep the pits from going through. But you can see I'm doing this with raw autumn olives. Nothing's coming out. It's just squishing them. No flesh will come through here unless you cook them first. So we're gonna boil the autumn olives to get them nice and, and liquidy and soft so that they'll squish through the sieve, but the pits will stay behind. Once you pick autumn olives, they go bad pretty quickly. If you leave them in the bucket on a normal fall day at 70 degrees, they'll go bad in about a day and a half, two days. Oh, come on, come on, not on the floor, not on the floor. I'm gonna put that on a medium heat and we're gonna let that start to cook. All right, so I've had this boiling for about two hours and you can see the pits have really separated from the juice and it's really turned into kind of a soupy mix. There we go. After a few minutes of running this through the food mill, you've got mostly pits and stems and a little bit of skins left inside the food mill. And underneath this, you've got kind of a puree. Check it out, guys. This is the puree I pushed through the food mill and you can see it's about the consistency of tomato soup, but we want it thicker. I don't want it to run all over the cookie sheet when I pour it onto the wax paper to make the fruit leather. Um, if I do, it'll make the fruit leather very thin um, and I'd like it a little bit heartier. So we're gonna reduce it by just letting it simmer and letting all the steam drive the moisture out of it and get it thicker and thicker. I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of honey. You can do either one or and as much or as little as you want. I know this looks like a lot of sugar and honey, but this is 34 pounds of fruit. So yeah, it's getting very diluted. Pretty good. All right, so I got some parchment paper here. I'm gonna lay it down on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna put it in the oven at the lowest setting possible, which is 170 degrees on this oven. You can use cookie sheets, cake pans, whatever you want, but fill the oven up. How much time it takes to dry the fruit leather is a little bit of a question mark. How thick you make it, how much moisture is in the jelly, all of these things vary from batch to batch. So just kind of eyeball it. 
put it in for three, four hours and start checking on it every couple hours and pull it out when it's ready. Now, another way of making it is to use a food dehydrator. And you see, I've got one set up right here and they've got this little fruit leather tray that usually comes with them. So instead of using the wax paper, uh, you put it on the tray. This one's set to 130 degrees and I have it running for 10 hours and it is almost done. I think what you'll find is that my fruit leather is quite thick. I'm making harness leather rather than suede. So uh, it takes a little bit longer to dry it when you put a really thick layer of it. So let's check out the fruit leather. Let's see. Feels pretty good. All right. There we go, some lovely pieces of autumn olive fruit leather from the dehydrator. Oh, oh no, that burned. The one in the glass was on the bottom and was in there way too long. I burnt it. Cut this into strips. I use a pizza cutter to do this. Nice piece of fruit leather. Do you want to twist them? I do. It's really good. I like how thick it is. Ooh, that's good. Here, Nathan, you want some? No. Do you like it? No. Well, I gotta tell you, that fruit leather comes out really, really well. But just make sure you don't burn it. You know, check the corners and little bits around and make sure it's not getting too crispy. All right, I'm gonna try something I've never done before. We're gonna try to make an autumn olive and strawberry pie here. I've never made a pie before. So, what the hey? Got some store-bought crusts. I once saw a TV show where they put some strawberries in a pie crust and covered them with a little bit of sugar. All right, so then we're gonna just take this jelly, leftover jelly from the, that. And, Doo, doo, doo. Oh, that is like Blue Ribbon County Fair right there. That's twink. There you go. The package said to let it cook for 10 minutes, so it's been about 20. Let's see. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Ooh, flaky crust. It's like cutting into a baby rabbit. Look at that. Yo, know, that is extraordinarily juicy. I should, maybe I should have put some pectin or something in. So Chris, what do you think I should have done to make it thick? Added some cornstarch. Did you just look that up on your phone? I did to double check myself. <laughs> so, so apparently if I had added some cornstarch, maybe it would have been thicker. But if you know how to make pie fillings, you, you leave a comment and let me know. There you go. Tastes better than it looks. <laughs> oh, there you go. I think this really brings out the flavor of the week old Wendy's Frosty. So. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things about eating stuff I find in my yard. If you want to see more great videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.